everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherp, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint this fun animal print sugar skull on the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He is going to track me with our three cameras so you can see every, every element of the painting action so you can paint along with me at home if you want to. If you're here for the live and you can chat and paint, whoa, you guys are powerful beings. <laughs> So I'm really excited about bringing this to you today because I've been asked a lot about how to uh, do cheetah print or how to do zebra print. And it was really fun as part of 13 Days of Halloween, which this is day 10. Mm. 10 live in a row, right, that we've been doing every day live, teaching a different Halloween project. We're coming up on uh, Friday, which is Friday the 13th, where you and I are going to carve pumpkins mm. together mm live. So definitely be sure and follow my Twitter and my Facebook and my Instagram and all that stuff because we're going to be posting really cool extra good stuff about pumpkin carving and pumpkin art. Is everybody excited today? Very much so. So, uh, oh, sorry. No, no, they, they, they're totally in love with the hat and they can't wait to do some print. They thought that was pretty exciting. So if you're wondering how difficult is animal print. So in our, in our channel here, in our channel, we rate things um, from a one hoot to two, three hoot scale. One being, I haven't seen a brush since, like, I don't know, kindergarten to three hoot, which is like, you're just not really, like, ready to go at your own yet, and you kind of still like hanging with your friends, but you need more challenging stuff. So this, surprisingly enough, is totally deep in the one hoot. Mm. This is a great project to do with your friends if they're new to painting, to do with your kids, to change up. There is, to that end, if you go in the description besides a complete materials list... There's a link to our website where you can see the entire Halloween collection. And on this uh, Sugar Skulls page is a traceable. Mm. I don't actually think that drawing and painting are necessarily connected. And I think that you can paint before maybe you learn how to draw. And I think that it's totally groovy. And it's definitely, definitely, definitely not cheating. I'm going to sip my coffee. Yes. So are we ready to do this fun, easy, groove, tacular little <laughs> painting? And I'm going to make my little spider go. Well, By the way, if you came for very serious art that is not fun, we're probably not delivering that today. Well, I think the people are, people are, so, so Christy's really worried because they don't have pumpkins yet at her local store. So I think that we're just, they're just now starting to get some pumpkins in stock in some of the country. So it may be a good time for us to put out some of those uh, pumpkin selection videos. Pum yeah, let's get in there early. Yeah. Get so, in there early, get in there hard, get in there aggressive. No, I'm just kidding. They, ju they just saw the spider on your head. They're like, oh my gosh, there's a spider on your head. So let's take this fabulous, I really love the sugar skull. I'm going to take this to the side, and, and I'm going to talk about my materials. And our, and our wishes? And our wishes. All right. So lots of interesting uh, wishes. Uh, there's a very spe special wish for healing for Daisy's nephew um, to heal and recover from a burn. Um, we have wishes for the safety of Napa and Marissa. Specifically, Napa's going through some fires. We have some wishes for Aurora to recover. She's in Puerto Rico, and she lost all her art supplies, and she's just waiting to get back home and get power back on. Mm -hmm. And that also goes to a bunch of Houston artists that we have. They're trying to get back home and get painting and get things repaired, and we're wishing that they do that. And we also want power and water for Serena because she lived on an island, and her island got hit really hard. Maybe didn't catch the news, but they got their power taken out and their water taken out. And so we're wishing that back. And also Colleen some well-being. Mm -hmm. So the Sugar Skull is bringing wishes of well-being to everybody to the day. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put my Sorrel tracing paper. Yes. Now I, Blue paper. These, I get this multi-pack off of Amazon. It has all these little colors. And I like the different colors. It works really well for me. But um, somebody brought up the fact that there's a really economic option of this at the Office Depot. Ooh. If that's something that you want to look for, mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. Because I do believe that um, you got to really work a sale. I'm just trying to tape this down so it's super, super stable and not shifty. I don't need my sugar skull to be shifty. And also need it to be centered. Need it to be centered. If you want to know all the paint materials, definitely check the description. But let me go over this real quick. So I have a bunch of stuff here. Some of it is super optional. I have some heavy body titanium white, phthalo green docks, purple, phthalo blue. I have 
uh, three reds here. I have Cad Red Light, Quinacridone Magenta, and Cad Red Medium. But the truth is here is if you only have one or the other of these two reds, just use the one. Don't go up, buy a new two. If you have both, play along with me. If you don't have both, just use what you have. Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Mars Black, Cad Yellow, and I also have my Fluid Black paint and my Fluid White paint, which remember guys, I love this stuff. I'm into it, but craft paint will work here as well. Or gesso. So don't feel trapped in the materials. That's great. Right? I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes yeah. they don't tell you what they're painting with, and I'm just making sure you know exactly what I'm using. So if you want to get that exact stuff, you can. I'm not being all secretive. <laughs> okay. Because I feel that's weird when teaching art <laughs> to be secretive. So I'm just going to make sure I'm super happy with the positioning. And I feel he's a little far over to the um, left. So I'm going to move him back over. Because I want him to be where I want him to be. Or her. Hmm. I don't know why I'm gender identifying my sugar skull. It's very strange. So I'm coming here. And I'm following along my traceable lines. And this is going to just give me a guide when I'm putting in my animal print background. It's going to leave, as I'm tracing over my black lines, it's going to leave a nice blue imprint that I can enjoy later. Because it will help guide me where I want to be. And it also helps my paintings from the example painting that you guys see to the finished painting be even more closely related. Because as an artist, I can get all creative if I go out on my own. Oh, yeah? Well, we've all seen it. <laughs> we all know it's true. I'm just going to do the teeth and the nose and the eye. I'm going to probably put these other items in later. Mm -hmm. You can use this tracing method more than once throughout the painting process. So you can, if you want, never actually draw. <laughs> so some of our community, Christy out here, she's like, I totally see flame when I look at this. It, this definitely reminds me of the flame. Let's yeah. see how it did. Flame Gremlin being one of our moderators here in the community who, who uses a sugar skull as her, uh, her, her, thingy. her icon very often. My low-tack tape here, which you guys can just use masking tape. So once I have this light outline here that I'm going to be using to make my little skull, um, I can start putting in my background. And my background is super fun and super easy. You guys will be so surprised. And the first part of the background is just yellow ochre. So I can move my big pile, of paint, big pile of paint over here to another pile. Squeeze out some of the dregs of this yellow ochre. So there we go. Just loading that there. And I'm going to get a nice big brush. I think I'll take a number 10 bright. And I'm going to dip this in water, drag off the extra water. Because mm -hmm. I don't want a lot of water in this because I want the paint to come on there fairly thick. Um, the thing about ochre is it's pretty transparent. That's the nature of the paint, isn't it's it? It's the nature of the or paint. Of the pigment. Of the pigment itself. Yeah, well, because it's dug up from the... Well, there's two kinds. There's oxide, which is made, and ochre, which is dug up. Same basic color, though. They are pretty much interchangeable. Dirt or pigments? You decide. Dirt or pigments? <laughs> I don't know why it's so serious. So the first basis of my cheetah, and listen, this pattern, this formula will work in any color combo. Mm. So if you need to do this like some pink and turquoise, some neon, you can do it. Once you see it, you'll be like, that is crazy fun and easy. You'll be so into it. But don't be surprised if you need two coats, even if you're painting the Pro Paint with your ochre, to get a nice finished look. Especially if you're doing wishes, because the words will show underneath. Mm. If you're not doing wishes, you may still want it, because it'll be a little streaky. So that's just a thing that you might want to know. And I don't know if you want to know it. But I'm really enjoying our 13 days of Halloween. I've been I love everyone who's been painting along live and posting every day. 
Because it is really um, pretty wild. You guys are keeping up. I am super excited about how everyone has been has been painting along and seeing all of the. You know, I got to see mm -hmm. all of the Oz witches that were coming in. Those have been some of my particular exciting ones. And I got and and the Lily Monsters. Those yeah. have been great. I mean, like I like all the seeing all the pleats and the gathers. Those have been really done well. So yeah, it's been it's been really fun. And I think that one was a was kind of a project that threw everybody and I was really glad that everyone who leaned into that because oh, well, it was a little bit it was a little bit crazy it was a little bit arty we, we learned the word is what what did we it, it's rushing rushing not, not rushing not rushing not not rushing of unusual size We're but not, rushing <laughs> rushing whoosh like a whoosh she learned so anyways something. that's not relative to this painting well, well it's relative because you might want to go back and watch the other one if you want to see more paintings you can check the icard by the way this is not the only sugar skull I've done. I've done a ton of sugar skulls. You have. And there's a playlist. If you want to, I got, I got Stormtrooper. I got Van Gogh. I got coffee. It's been a thing I've been doing. I got the kind with the girl. So, I mean, just, uh, you know, if you just need to have some sugar skulls around your house, I probably have your hookup here. It's a, I just like the subject matter, so I paint it on occasion. I'm going to dry this to do the second coat. Yeah. So if you if like uh like someone was saying if you guys go out to the artsherpa.com forward slash uh uh, uh let me make sure it's it's that I've got it right before I tell you do 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 yes for, uh you go to the theartsherpa.com forward slash sherpa Halloween and it'll bring you to our Halloween landing page and it'll show you the this this year's so if if you're in the future in 2018 19 20 so on and so forth. If you go to that page, you're going to find all the current stuff. But if you look down below, well, you'll see all of the past stuff. So like right now, you're going to find this year. Right right now, this year, uh, we're on October 10th, which is a sugar skull, skull. Tomorrow will be Morticia on the 11th, then the Sanderson sisters, and then a pumpkin carving on the 13th. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Plus, there's everything we've already done. I think we're almost up to you could do all 31 days of Halloween painting. You know, and, and I was just saying that, you know, if, if you come back here next year and, and come to the art, go to theartsherpa.com forward slash Sherpa Halloween, you'll be finding whatever current craziness we're working on. That's right. I think the tentative talk for next year is classic monsters. Classic monsters. That's mm -hmm. right. I remember that. Because, like, the monster maidens, a lot of people are like, where are all the boy monsters? I'm like, I don't know. It was a monster maiden theme. I just. <laughs> maidens. <laughs> maidens. <laughs> Throw Frankenfurter at you, but that's it. <laughs> so, you know, and we'd already covered that from the lips. Yes. Um, and Vampire didn't actually end up in this crew, which. Yeah. Was like we, you know, we, you there's know. only so many we could do. We so to many to, days. So many days. But next year we may do some. We may do another different thing. Yeah. And you can still go to the artsherpa.com forward slash sherpa Halloween and find out about that. Yeah. Because. But this will still be there. But this will still be there, and and you'll see this wonderful collection of paintings that are there now. And go rinse this out really well. Yeah. And dry this and put this to the side. So the base of my cheetah print is this sort of gold color. And I'm going to hit this again, not to give John a heart attack, for about 30 seconds with the hair dryer. Okay. Because what happens is um, the uh, paint needs to be dry for, I, this isn't good for a wet-on-wet -wet technique. It really needs to be dry for the technique to work really well. Hmm. So while you're drying that, that's incredible. So uh, Lynn, one of our community was just saying that she carves more than 550 pumpkins for her job in only one weekend. Wow, that's an incredible pumpkin carving job. I imagine that you're, you know, that you could translate some of those skills, you know, to carving and sculpting in other areas. So that's probably got to be pretty rewarding and challenging all in one weekend. So, wow, that's pretty incredible. Well, thank you guys for all coming out and joining us today. Um, Really love having you. Have been loving seeing all of the work that's been coming up on uh, uh, on on Facebook and on our website. Thank you guys for sharing all that stuff with us. What, so, what are you putting out there? I am putting out some burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, sienna. right? And I'm going to also indulge in some cad red light. In this is optional, guys. I think it makes a difference in the result. But if you don't have cad red light, don't go out and buy it for this. Mm -hmm. But if you do have it, go ahead and grab it out because it's really fun. It's kind of that kind of a deal. If you have it, use it. This is a number eight cat's tongue. You could do this with a different shape brush. You could do this with a round or a bright because it's more important the shape of the spot. 
This brush is just really lovely to use. So I'm going to mix the Cad Red Light with the Burnt Sienna. And you can see it takes it into almost this burnt orange range. And I really liked that for this cheek print. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the trick. It's don't make dots. Don't make nice, neat circles. You're going to want to make small, uneven shapes that are roundish. Okay? And the other trick you're going to do is you're going to let some of these cross over into your skull a little bit. Because we're going to be painting over it anyways. You're going to space these out some because you have to put some black dots between them. And the trick really is going to be non-uniformity. You don't want to line them up in rows or ridges. You don't want to make patterns. You want to break patterns. This is the lesson of the cheetah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Be like cheetah. Hide. You know, this is very ineffective on the Vegas Strip, though. I see lots of girls in cheetah, and they do not camouflage at all. Yeah. Just saying. They did not learn the lesson of the cheetah. So, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Because I love cheetah print. Yep. So, no shade. I love my cheetah sisters. You wear it right down to your shoes. Yes. Go, girl. Cheat it up. Now, some of these should be smaller and, and maybe diminutive, right? And then some should be bigger. And you want some of them to go off your canvas and, like, layer over your skull so you have some depth. Make a little one here. See how we're just avoiding making a dot, but it's still round. And we don't want it to have rough edges either. Do, 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 making cheetahs. Gotta make some small ones. And so that's the thing is just trying to go be like, where should I put one of these? Right? Because you still got to leave room for the black spots coming through. Black spots coming through. Sometimes it helps me to turn my canvas if I'm getting crowded at the edge where it's lipped into my easel. Yeah. You may just be painting on your table, though, so that may not be such a big deal. So, yeah, I just made that one bigger. Yeah. But he should have a friend that's small. That guy can come off the edge there. And maybe somebody peeking out. I'm just trying to make it roundish, but not round. Be cheetah. Mm. No one can predict what you will do. They're so disarmed by the size and variance of your spots, they cannot even see you. I don't know why this is my thing. <laughs> You know what it just is. You got to get into what you get into. So, you know, you just want to make sure that you've got some small dots, some bigger ones. Yeah. Some of them are off the canvas. Some of them layer on the skull. You don't want too many. You don't want it too crowded. But you don't want it too spacious. Don't crowd the spots. Don't crowd your spots. Yeah, this is a lot like don't crowd the mushrooms from Julia Julia. <laughs> Good movie, by the way. Good movie. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put out some of my fluid carbon black. I'm going to put it out. Something that I had to learn about cooking mushrooms. You can't crowd the mushrooms. You've got to give them space. The, give them, they need room, man. You need a big pan to cook them. Okay. So I'm going to dry this brush out. All right. I'm going to, because this is fluid paint, I really don't need to add any water to the brush. And I'm going to show you how we do. I'm going to come here and make this very kind of uneven line. And then I'm going to give this a couple dots. Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha, what's that? You will find out. This one can have a little thing here and some three dots. Three dots. A little more connected though, okay. maybe. Because what we're trying to do is Gish just, you. again, you're trying that. I just did one without the brown. So you're doing exactly the same thing that, that Evolution and the Cheetah were trying to do. Make it so you can't see them. 
So some of this will have a more consistent line and some will have broken spots. And that's an important part of the process. It breaking up the pattern. Breaking up the pattern. Give a, give a little dot there. When you first do it, so here's the challenges. The challenges to cheat are mostly emotional. Mm -hmm. Because when you first do it, you'll be like, this looks super terrible. Yes. Same with zebra stripe. And I zebra striped my daughter's room. <laughs> There's, there's this moment when you start first starting, you're like, this doesn't look anything like an animal pattern. What the heck? It's cumulative. You need to hang in with me. Yeah. Okay? It's cumulative. I'm going to come here, make a dot. Another little trick that you can do is print out some examples of cheetah spots. Oh, yeah, just to have a quick reference there. Well, because what it'll, yeah, it'll help, it'll give you some ideas of different ways you can surround the brown, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll just keep making the same. I'm going to make an open one here. See, as it starts to build up, it gets all cheetah like. It just takes a minute for it to find its. You, what brush are you using there? I'm still with my number eight. Okay. I'm just uh, still. I'm just trying to make these little, little areas. See? Yep. Now I'm filling in that space, and the top of this is going all cheetah on us. Yeah. But there's a moment, man, you are not going to feel your cheetah. Also, there's a feeling like you can make some sort of spot that m totally messes up your cheetah. Interestingly enough, I don't actually think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have soldiered on for some very strange cheetah decisions, and still the overall cheetah worked out. Maybe just one dot there, there. Not two dots, right? Breaking it up. Yeah. Be as unpredictable as your cheetah spots. You can do this in any combination of light, mid-tone, dark, period. Yeah. This is literally a limitless process here. I might surround that one, see? And then I'll be like, oh no, have a little open spot. And then cheetah. Cheetah's cheetah. Just making cheetah. Cheetah. Che Ch -ch -ch cheetah. See, so we're just going along, breaking up these cheetahs. How are we doing with our cheetah? Really good. This is, I mean, like, and and I think that uh, the uh, that your explanation of, of the of sticking with it is really helpful because you know it's it's <laughs> tough to know where the spots should start and end. Right, because you don't have you're not like duplicating an exact cheetah back, right? You're like doing the pattern of cheetah. This is the same issue with camouflage. It's a, it's a hang in and hold on kind of art moment. And and this really, you know, this is a, on our scale of one to three. This is a one, something that this is one. This is something that anybody could start doing. Yeah, yeah. And even if you have a real hard time the first time you do a cheetah, doesn't mean you will the next time. Mm -hmm. This will, ha you'll get it. It'll happen. Yeah, it's it's just about you got to you got to keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. So then when you're all done, you just sort of look and go, do I like the overall balance of my cheetah pattern? And I'm going to rinse out. I'm either going to start the next one with a completely clean brush, or what I do is um, rinse out my, my brush really well. I don't know why that cost me a minute to think. What I'm going to have some coffee. Of? I need some I'm coffee. I'm coming out the other side of this cold, but I think it still has got me in the... I, the spider represents the cold. The spi is the spider... Is that what the spider is representative of? Mm-hmm. Of coldness? It does. Of my cold. Of my cold. We're going to do some phthalo turquoise. Are we? Are we, uh, we are. And to do that... Oh, do we have bubbles? I will give you some. I will did give we, you. Did we? Did three hundred people show up to oh, Sugar Skull? Oh, not quite yet, but we're we're they're they're they're, they're we're, we're we're out here excited to dance anyway. We're just under, and they wanted to like pour some bubbles, and so oh wait, I'm on the wrong button. Look at that. I was thinking you were doing something there, and I was like, so I'll give you some bubbles while you were while you were getting ready because it was a uh, it was feeling kind of bubbly at the moment anyway. 
So we're gonna we're gonna just having fun. I'm just having fun. You can put the paint down. I'm gonna put some paint out. So my phthalo turquoise is phthalo green and phthalo blue. And then I'm gonna be mixing these together and adding a little bit of white, and that's what's gonna get me to my phthalo turquoise color. And it's one to one for the color that I have on this skull of the phthalo turquoise and the phthalo blue. Put out a little bit of white. Put out a little white to paint those into. Now you can use a little palette knife to make that mix easier. So you can pull out, see, real easy to one to one. They're like, come here, you two. One to one, and they'll go, okay. Saying so you can scrape so you're not losing any paint. And this is thoroughly mixed. So sometimes we loosely mix colors so they're streaky. But on the phthalo turquoise, we'll thoroughly mix it. And I'm going to get my number eight brush and some slightly cleaner water. I don't want any muddy water mm -hmm. on my phthalo turquoise. So I'll reserve the muddy water for rinse outs. I'm going to dip in water, drag off, make sure I don't see any pigment. I swirl around, load up, flip the brush, swirl around, load up, and grab some white. Yeah. I may dip in water to improve flow. And as long as this is all dry, I can just paint the whole skull with this color. And around, I'm going to paint around the eyes and things like you do. All right. I'm just painting around that. And enjoying that. I'm trying to give myself a smooth edge around my surfaces. You could paint this on a jacket, denim jacket. You could paint this on a backpack. You could actually be pretty creative with this design. Put it on any canvas tote you wanted, wine glasses, wine bottles. This is one of those things that will translate itself well to a variety of surfaces. So customize up your world if turquoise mm. sugar skull speaks I to you. I like the turquoise. I think it's pretty awesome. Do you? Yeah. Just going around here and just making sure. Paint around my little heart-shaped uh, skeleton noses are upside down hearts. I'm just going to paint around that. Mm-hmm. A little glimp of dry paint there. Pull that to the side. And just enjoy my paint. Pull off that other little bit of dry paint. That happens sometimes. Yeah. Paint skins. Get in your stuff. Now, if you're very patient, you can paint around the teeth. I'll just put my teeth back in. Yeah. That's just me. So I'm going to paint those out. If you have trouble drawing, go ahead and leave those in and just paint around them carefully. Hmm. Or if you're if you're worried about the uh, your your white strength, the or if you're worried about the strength of your white paint, yeah. But I want to paint my skull, so I'm gonna just go ahead and add those back in. So just going back and forth, and you can see I'm just doing nice flat strokes, and sort of paying attention to the direction of my skull. so that the strokes sort of flow around the curves that I have here. Mm. That'll give you a nicer result. Just coming around here. I really liked having a turquoise skull, but if you wanted to have a white one or a different color one or a bright pink or anything, you can change that up too. This really should let you customize up your story any way you want. 
I hear furious typing over there, mm-hmm. Mr. Cooney. I'm just chatting with everybody. It's just, you know, I, I like, I really enjoy our community. And, you know, sometimes they're, you know, they're just your questions of asking, you know, hey, where's this other painting at that you guys are working on? Or, you know, I, you know, there's, there was this other project you guys did that's kind of like this one. Where would I find it? And, you know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of times where you'll hear me furiously chatting away back here mm-hmm. because I'm, uh, you know, I'm answering questions about, you know, um, shipping your canvas boards or <laughs> you know <laughs> the art stuff that we do yeah, yeah john john definitely is in chat actively if you come during a live so besides him reading questions to me he's pretty familiar with all of our stuff as are our moderators and so you find you get a lot of support during live events that mm-hmm. is pretty darn special in my opinion well, i'm really but lovely. i read all the comments after so always feel like you can put questions or comments in after a video because I go over it. I'm a reader. So when I have a nice finish with that, I will, you know, wrap that up. I'm just trying to get it where I like it. You take it where you like it. And I'm going to rinse out. Now, so Alan was asking, do we want variations in the color to give it depth or, or brush strokes, or are you wanting to blend it to make it really smooth? I think on this project... You let your preference be your guide. I tend to like things a little painterly and a little bit loose. I like to show that I'm working with paint. Um, But if preferentially you're like, I really want this to be a very smooth graphic surface, it would be okay to mix things thoroughly and paint out like solid fields of color. It would not hurt the piece. I think both options, as long as you're settled in it, are going to be really good. I'm going to dry this sucker. You dry it. A lot of drying on this project. There is. There's, well, because there's a lot of layers. A lot and, of layers. And, and we have a lot of acrylic layers. So, well, hold on a second. Oh, excuse me. I had a sneeze there. So, man, something's sneaking up there. So, thank you guys for all coming and hanging out with us. It's a... Uh, pretty exciting to be here in the 13 days of Halloween with all of you guys. You know that we really enjoy Halloween and uh, it's one of our favorite holidays. And, and so don't forget that this coming up Friday the 13th, we're going to be doing a massive, massive pumpkin carve event. And it's just getting more and more exciting as we've gotten closer to it because uh, as Cinnamon said, we've got some Facebook and some Instagram things that we're kind of working on for that. And, uh, Cinnamon's try, you know, talking us, t- trying to talk me into uh, some other interesting projects that uh, we may talk about doing. And uh, I don't, I, I have a promise not to promise anything. So all I can do is uh, uh, elude mysteriously to things that I can't promise. What can't you promise? Anything. No. <laughs> so I can just elude to things that I can't promise about. Like that you have a project that I can't talk about or promise that you would like us to do, but I can't even mention because it would be promising. And that's about the best circular talk I can give until you get back to talk What to I them. do in my home is I take deep breaths. And I just release them. Release them. And I let it go, especially during my painting progress. Listen, if you're really new to painting, and you might be because you're coming into this project, remember to breathe. <laughs> People tend to hold their breath while they're painting. And it's very important to every once in a while just take a minute while you're letting things dry. And release it. Very important. Right. And in marriage, it's also important to do that. <laughs> well, I said I said massive pumpkin carving event. And they're like, massive? What does that mean, massive? And I'm like, well, massive <laughs> for me means that I have more than six pumpkins <laughs> laying around on the floor of my studio. And I know that there are more being delivered. So that seems to me to but be But some of that massive. is experimental pumpkin. But there's some experimental pumpkining for sure. So in, I'm, I'm trying to get a smiling guideline here. Still seems, still seems kind of massive to me. <laughs> I, I, it, there's a lot of pumpkins. All right. And I'm going to do the heart. I'm going to draw my little heart. If you're not a drawer, you can take your tracing paper back over here. Right? And I think that's too high. I don't like the height of that heart. So I'm going to take some clean water and a clean brush and look. So Mama, and erase it. Mama D says that she, Hi, Mama D. she says she has renamed your cat's tongue brush, and they are now the kitty kisses brush. I love it. Give your painting kitty kisses. <laughs> That's awesome. I wanted to leave a little more room for my roses, so I just moved this down oh, a bit, and that way I can put the wings up here. 
because I want some wings on that. So just some room for roses, room for flowers, and wings. So that's just where I just need to know where those things are firsted. And to make my life easier, I might even put out some fluid white. You can just use whatever white you have. Don't go out and buy something new. It's just if you have it, it's a great place to use it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I like to mix my heavy body to my fluid white together. I'm just trying to get a pigment coverage. I'm going to come inside my eyes and smooth out now all that, that crazy. Now that white is almost the same white as the background. It's almost just a touch. The, the background is yeah. just a touch yellower. You can just almost a touch. hardly, hardly see it there. This is titanium white. This is bright white. No eggshell here. <laughs> no, no eggshell here. Though you could do like a... Um, uh, like a unbleached titanium here if you wanted to it would look really good depends on the type of shabby chic little house you've got going on right mm -hmm. you got to make those decisions so I'm, but I'm just getting this painted in underneath here finishing this out smoothing out these edges getting these rounded around mm -hmm. like you do like you do just making that nice Finish. And this is a number four round. It has a nice point. I have control and it, it will do these nice circles. Rounds really lend themselves to curves. So I'm going to get in my fluid paint and I'm going to come here in the middle and I'm going to make a nice kind of bean shaped ellipse. That's my big tooth. And my big tooth is going to have a friend. It's about the same size and width, and I'm going to make another ellipse. And that's two front teeth. He's got two front teeth. Right now, it's a whole thing. I'm oh. going to come to the side, make a slightly smaller ellipse, and a similar size, slightly smaller ellipse. Well, this is Maiden Week, so it's she, right? She. She, because Maiden Week. It's Maiden She. You're right. Maybe next year we'll, we'll have a boy one. No, I really, really think that we're going to do classic monsters next year. We're going to make sure that our main characters are all the classics. Yeah. So that's going to be real fun. You know, well, I mean, other than The Bride of Frankenstein, I wonder, you know, you know, there's a... In, in, the, in the classic monsters, you know, like there wasn't a, a female swamp thing or a wolf man. It's Bride of Frankenstein and, and Vampira for sure. Yeah, those those are really your two, you know, your your traditional classic ones. So I'm going to do one more tooth. Depending on how classic you could say the 50 you know, 50 foot woman is classic. That is. That's very classic. Um All right. So I'm just going to keep going. So I've got the two big ones, and then on each side I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, that should be the same number of teeth. Uh -oh. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I was like, how am I going to get seven? And my brain, like, exploded. Don't comment on that issue. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Things are fine. <laughs> I'm going to rinse out. They would like to see an Edward Scissors hands next year. Oh, he's an interesting... Yeah, very interesting. I'm going to put out my cad red medium. Definitely a monster. So you can see when you see the two cads together, this is a much richer red. Mm -hmm. But listen, again, just use the reds you have. If you have both, use both, have fun. If you don't have both, use what you have. Especially in this project. Because it's not a mixing project. So you can get away with everything. I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm going to come in. Get some nice red paint on it. Load up. You see how I'm pulling it all into my brush? I'm just going to paint my red heart. I should have known that. I should have been up there looking at it. Uh, depending on the paint you're using, you may need two, even three coats mm. to get the pop of red you want. But the nice thing is, is the, this red and this turquoise look so good together that you won't really have to worry even if the turquoise pops through. Well, what's interesting is the way that it pops through. It makes it, it they kind of look really cool together. Yeah, it really does. So it's it's a good combination, and it's just go by your paint. What your paint's doing for you. 
All right. So we're rinse that out. Uberty, duberty, duberty well. And I'm going to get my number four cat's tongue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just make sure it's primed. I'm going to load it with black paint. I'm going to very carefully go around my eyes here with a nice little thicker line. If I wanted a thinner line, I'd lose a small detail brush, but I want kind of a weighted line here. <laughs> you know, you could almost do the 30 days of Johnny Depp. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Just thinking of all the characters that he's played. You could have a Stephen King month. I mean, some people are just prolific. Yeah. <laughs> I think at some point, like, somebody would, like, send a cease and desist, though. Right? <laughs> like, 30 days of Johnny Jeff, would be like, enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to outline the nose. Not the teeth with this brush, by the way. And not my heart. I'm going to outline my whole skull. And there's a there are spider legs on your head. And there are spider legs on my head while I'm outlining my whole skull. How are you liking the sugar skull? This was such this a is, weird risk to take. This is one that everybody has super super enjoying that you did. I think that the the combination of having a, a really easy uh, sugar skull and uh, leopard print has just tickled a lot of folks. So this is this has been a great a great addition to our 13 days. Good. Yeah, it was I was so hard with traditional leopard. Traditional leopard. But I did want to make sure we had one pretty easy one cuz yep. we've got two hoot and three hoot pretty covered. So I'm just tracing around the outside of my line with that brush. And I'm going to rinse out. Oh, like, actually, let's see. Oh, I can actually do my zebra right now. Oh, can you? So I'm going to dry back off and reload. And yeah, you, I can. You, and you it's super easy. Let's talk zebra. We have, you have to trace the teeth, too. I'll you? trace the teeth with a small brush in a minute. Oh, that's right. So first line, I'm going to come out. I'm going to be working. This is the middle of my eye. My zebra is coming at a diagonal. Now, which brush are you using here? This is the number okay. four cat's tongue. Number four cat's tongue. So beginning of the stroke, a bit of a press. I'm going to be... See how I wiggled it? Yes. Now I'm going to take a small little stroke and join it there. That anchors my zebra. Zebra now, anchor. Next to him, make a little line, and press and taper, and press and taper. So thick at the beginning and it tapers out. Zebra, doing the same thing cheetah's up to. Trying to, to break up expectation. Make that little line there. See that? Mm -hmm. Pretty easy once we get these going. I'm leaving room for lines to come down from the top. Leaving room. You don't have to be super perfect. You just want to make sure that you've got space to come back with these lines. You can make small ones. You can make one that comes across here. And then it can have a friend right there. See how that does? Very zebra-ish. All right. A little more zebra, maybe a little short line, and then a long one coming across there. That's the zebra. See how easy zebra? Could you do this in neons and rainbows and every color on the planet? Yes, you could. I'm going to continue the angle of my zebra across my nose. See, I'm coming back down, and it's just that interweaving of the stripes. Mm 
It's going to help me. Just my stripe interweaving. Make a little short one here. And come down across. See? Zebra! Zebra! As zebra stripes. It's just zebra stripes. This is all we're doing. Mm -hmm. You're ready to do a whole room now. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, zebra, much like cheetah, will give you pause every once in a while. And you've got to just hang in. It's cumulative. Mm -hmm. There we go. Cumulative zebra. Cumulative zebra. Cumulative. That, that, that seems like a superhero's name. <laughs> I am cumulative zebra. You could be. Just making sure my lining is nice. I strike fear into the hearts of criminals because I see things in black and white. If it goes real south on you, like I have a boo-boo here, you just paint it out. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to clean up that line. In a minute. In a minute. I'm going to rinse this out real, 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 real well. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do a cool thing. I'm going to load it up with some white paint. See, I've loaded it up? Yep. At the top of my heart, I'm going to press down and pull a stroke. I'll make little wings this way. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. My little heart has wings. There we go. So the heart has wings. It's also a good time to add a second coat to your teeth if they need it. Oh, yeah. Adding a second coat to your teeth is always a good idea. Get them all. Rinse, 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 rinse. Still Shame. letting this dry. I'm going to come back and fix it in a second. Fix it. Mm-hmm. Let's put the little flower down there and put out a little quinacridone. Quinacridone. Um, mm -hmm. I, a, a word I now understand <laughs> what it means. <laughs> at, at first, I thought this was just something like a sports word that you would be shouted mm -hmm. at in an art store. Quinacridone! <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But I now, wonder if you could just go into an art store and shout quinacridone. Quinacridone! You know, and everybody would go, hoo -ah! yeah, just, I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> not a real thing. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> But it should be a real thing. Let's make it a thing. Oh, no, no. There are art stores around the <laughs> I'll world. I'll try to remember, like, if I'm in an art store and you go, quit Akronon, I'll go, hoo <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid. You should be very afraid. So I put out quinacridone, diox purple, phthalo green, and cad yellow. Yeah. Now, first of first, I'm going to make my little flowers. It's fun to make flowers. I'm going to be flipping the canvas, John, but I'm going to be centering all around here. Yeah. I'm going to take a little of my quinacridum, add a smidge of my docks to it. And then I'm going to grab some white. I'm loaded it all up on my brush, and it's loosely mixed. Loosely. And I'm going to come here, press and pull. Oh. Now flip. Press and pull. Press and pull, and I'm going to flip, press and pull, hold my canvas on an angle. There we go. Got a nice little flower there. Little quinacridone, maybe more on here, add some white. Now, this is these are a little bit more uh, quin than pink than the ones you did on the other one. Hmm? You, these are more quin. Yes. Yeah, very much. I like this. I like the purpliness. I don't know what you mean. Are they, they feel different? Well, they're the same. Oh. It's just color balance. Oh. <laughs> and that's why we're doing what we're doing right now. It's true. <laughs> this is in that spectral allure of, <laughs> yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's... There's definitely an experience here that we're all having. Now, the, for the roses up top, I'm going to pull a little quin mm -hmm. and 
more diox for the first layer. I'm going to come right here. These will be a little different because I'm going to do these a little better. So I'm going to make a nice, pretty big circle. Oh, yeah. Because I felt like these needed to be a little bigger than I did them. They were a little uniform, and I wanted some different sizes, and so I made some plans like you do. I don't want to take out my wings, so I'm not going to. Just grabbing that. I'm still going to keep it to about four flowers, though. Let's see how this one's bigger now. Three smaller ones. I just like that better. And I'll rinse out. By now, this is dried. Okay. So what I can do is I can take a little of my leftover thalo turquoise and get some white. And come here and just be like, what? Hold on. Let's fix you. See how you can do? So if it's bugging you, you don't have to live with it. It can be the thickness you decide. You decide. You decide. Definitely, definitely you decide. Now I'm going to get a little yet green and yellow, loosely mixed, even a little white. All right. And I'm going to plant and pull and make two leaves, maybe a little more green. Too much white. But it won't really matter because these can be different. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to plant a couple. Just touching and pulling to create the leaves, see? Almost one stroke. It's not one stroke, but it's almost one stroke. Well, you did do it in one stroke. I did do it in one stroke. It's just not that kind of one stroke. And I'm going to come up here and make a curly cue. Well, maybe it is, but not officially. Not officially. <laughs> and I'll put a little more of my dark green in here. And I'll, make, I'll wind a little vine. There we go. Just a little joy. A little bit of joy. All right, now I'm going to get my green and my yellow. I'm not even going to add white to it because I want something bright. And I'm going to pull a couple Ooh. little leaves. You can paint the leaves any way you want. You want to do like traditional diamond leaves, you can do that. You want to just pull some leaves, you can do that. Does not matter. It does matter that you have leaves though. The green definitely creates some balance. I'm going to be twisting my canvas a little bit. You're going to notice that I'm pulling my canvas to get the angle I want. So I'm not fighting what it's organically doing. Mm. I think it's fun to put a little yellow center in, so I'm going to just load up my brush and give this a little yellow center. Oh, yeah. It's just a touch. It's not like a make or break it. Rinse, rinse, rinse. The center of my roses, I'm going to take a little pink and white. And we're going to just do our little, we've done this a bunch, right? Our little circular decorative rose strokes. Circular decorative rose strokes. You can do it with your round brush. You can do it with your cat's tongue. The point is just to make little light circles swirling out. And the trick is I'm leaving some purple underneath showing. Mm -hmm. And that's giving everything some definition. These are a little more purple because I mixed more purple in than I initially did. And that's how that happens. Yeah. So I'm going to get my number one. I'm going to load it with my black fluid paint. You guys could be using craft paint. You could be using the golden fluid. I love the golden fluid. I think it's some pretty cool stuff. But I get that it has a cost. And I'm going to very chillily outline. Oh. I'm going to try not to drag my hand through all my wet paint. 
And this is very folk art, how I'm doing. It is. It's really cool. I like this outline. So the nice thing about this is it creates a sense of playful wonder in the piece. Takes down the pressure on you to be incredibly mechanical. This is this is great. We've uh, fun? I think you know we're gonna we're gonna end up doing this just in under an hour, and that's uh, which is amazing yeah. for sugar skull. Cause sugar skulls are pretty involved little beings. And then I just like to very carefully outline my teeth. But again, it's a folk art outline, so don't feel like you have to be perfect here. Yeah. Playful, yes. Perfect, no. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wow. I'm going to sign up over Cheetah here. Because I'm being like the Cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking about how my signature impacts the piece. And that... Wow. Here, get, 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 see the full screen. Let's go over here to, the, to, the, to, to RoboCam. Look at it full screen so that everybody can see. Oh, yeah. That turned out really nice. All right. So show us, you're going to recap for us here? All right. So we traced the image on because mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with tracing. We painted the outside in two coats of yellow ochre because yellow ochre or yellow oxide, which are essentially the same, tend to be transparent and two really helps. Something you wouldn't have to do in oil. Um, we did the orange and brown to create dots that were some bigger, some smaller, some behind the skull, some off the canvas, and not round. And we tried to be like a cheetah, be unexpected. We then did a black sort of outlining that wasn't an outline. It was also, again, this sort of dot roughed outline. And then some filling in the open yellow spaces with some black dots. We painted our skull turquoise right then we painted in our white here we did some black outlining around the outer edges we chose our cad red heart but you could do any right i showed you how easy it is to zebra we did some one stroke not one stroke flowers and some more one stroke not one stroke flowers and we did some very light folksy outlining with a number one brush and that's all it takes and we talked about that you could mix this up in any old color set that you want. Once you get the idea of how this is painted, you can be playful with your color palette. On this project, I would say be fearless. All right. Well, we're going to see everybody tomorrow. Tomorrow, because it's time to do Morticia Adams. All right. So the listing is up, and you can follow it and remind yourself. And remember, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, to follow those things about what's happening with the pumpkin carving. I want to see you guys at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.